name's Heather Mitchell and I'm an artist here in Pensacola, Florida. I started my artwork just about nine years ago uh, after decades of doing other work and I've really found a lot of inspiration in our local wildlife, particularly the birds and especially the wading birds. So egrets, herons, and pelicans and so forth are very popular here and I have a special uh, place in my heart for the snowy egret and the great white egret. I take my own reference photos. I go out either canoeing or to a park uh, or to the waterside and find birds and take hundreds of photographs. Um, I found through experience that different times of day give you different lighting. The birds tend to be most active and most present in the places that I go uh, just about the hour after sunrise and about an hour before sunset. I think they're getting closer to their nests and doing a lot of feeding. So this is a photograph of a great egret, which is the taller of the two egrets. Um, they have a sort of an orange beak and their legs and their feet are black. The snowy egret, which I've depicted here, is a smaller bird. It's about knee high and their beaks are black. Their legs are black, but they have very brightly sort of orange yellow feet. So that's the way you can tell the difference. These are smaller birds with the yellow feet and black beak, and these are about a hip high in size. Um, during the spring is breeding season, and so the coloring on these birds changes. With the great egret, uh, you get this area at the top of the beak that turns a beautiful color of green, and they also uh, start growing longer feathers to attract a mate, and this is known as their breeding plumage. I took this photo at the Wildlife Sanctuary of Northwest Florida, which is here in Pensacola. Um, they take in a lot of injured animals and will rehabilitate uh, and release those that they can. Uh, I also take photographs at the Veterans Park um, here in Pensacola, Admiral Mason Park. That's where I caught this photograph that was the basis uh, for this drawing here. With my artwork, um, I've been using colored pencil and I've recently transitioned into pastel pencils and pastels. This is a paper called Pastel Matte. It's a sanded paper that's actually fairly smooth. And one thing that I'll use is called Pan Pastels. It's just like a pressed powder and they have different shapes of sponges you can use and you just simply wipe the powder onto the sponge and it can be applied right onto the paper. They have different colors. Um, those make a nice base coating or I can use those often for a background color. Um, they can be used by themselves, but I'll tend to use them in combination with pastel pencils. Um, if you use this as an undercoat, you can go over the top of it with pastel pencil to adjust the color and to get fine details. These birds that I specialize in um, have a lot of fine qualities in their feathers. They have a lot of graceful positions that they take. Uh, there's a lot that happens with the light and the shadow and the different colors. When I go into their environment, I'm very conscious that uh, these places where we see them is where they live, it's where they feed and they breed and care for their young, um, it's where they nest, and uh, they're, the egrets in particular are very shy birds, so I'm careful of, in about how I approach them and I'm actually able to get pretty close to them when I pay attention to their body language. When I try to wear colors that blend in with the environment and move very slowly, um, and I'll just approach the birds little by little sideways so it doesn't look like I'm approaching them head on. And I watch closely their body language. If I see them start to stiffen up and observe me, then I know I'm a little bit too close for their comfort and I'll back off or I'll sit down and become smaller and I'll hold still. Then when I see them relax and start behaving in their normal ways again, then I'll approach a little bit more. And I've been able to get fairly close. I also observe that when there's other people in the environment that aren't so cautious, maybe not aware of the 
birds um, that the birds will be uh, scared off and I don't want to infringe on their territory so I'm, I'm careful about that. So these are both works in progress um, that I'm working on from photographs that I've taken very near here. Um, I take what I think of as imperfect pictures of perfect birds. This uh, picture was the inspiration for this drawing and of course I'm not going to include the grass or the duck that was present at the time. And I've chosen to portray this bird rather on some rocks. Uh, there's an area just uh, off the Bayfront Parkway that is known as Project Green Shores where after the large hurricane sort of decimated that environment, they went back and planted some of the sea grasses and put rocks, which is um, a really popular hangout for these birds. I like the fact that I have a long zoom lens on my camera because it allows me to observe the birds close up and I really try to pay a lot of attention to their eyes and their expressions and the details in their feathers. Um, part of what I love about doing artwork is it causes me to really observe in great detail just all the various beauty of these birds and to try to portray what I see and help others come close to that bird and appreciate them in the same way that I do. Because this has been a sort of a second career for me, I want to make sure and encourage other people, if you have a passion that you enjoy doing, like art, even if you just sketched in high school, um, go ahead and pursue it. It's never too late. You don't know how far you're going to go. I certainly didn't when I started doing this nine years ago in my 50s. Um, I had no idea that I would go on to display in galleries along the Gulf Coast and that I would enter exhibits and win awards. It's been really a very fulfilling pursuit for me. It's given me a lot of happiness. It's opened doors. I've met wonderful people. Uh, so whatever your passion is, whether it's singing, playing an instrument, uh, if you cook well, just pursue it with full vigor. Um, no matter what part of life you're in, whether you have time, just carve out five minutes a day and follow your passion. Thank you.